Good morning. I bring this message to you this morning from home again. I hope you're doing well and uh, coping with the uh, confinement and uh, not connecting with anyone who has the possibility of uh, the coronavirus. Anyway, this morning I want to bring some words of encouragement and uh, first of all, let's pray. Lord, I pray that you will, this morning, bring us encouragement, that your word will bring light. As we face difficult situations, Lord, we know that we can trust you. We thank you for all that you are to us. We thank you for sending your son into the world to die on a cross that we might be forgiven. That he rose victorious over death and is ascended and sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. And so we thank you for your presence with us. And we ask, Lord, that as uh, we share this morning, that you will bless each of us. That we might know that you are in control. Whatever people say, Lord, we pray that people will be drawn to you and will begin to pray and realize the value of prayer. So, Lord, I pray that you'll protect the, the health workers and watch over them and that they might have all the equipment that they need. And, Lord, that the government will provide what is needed. Again, help us to support each other and be encouraged. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to uh, play a couple of songs on the piano because last week somebody said... Uh, I miss the singing. Well, I'm not going to sing, but I'm going to play.
hope you recognize those songs. I want to read now from 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, I think sometimes when we read scriptures we forget uh, what the writers went through. Sometimes they remind us, other times it's taken for granted because the people uh, that they were writing to knew exactly their circumstances. We know the story of Peter, we know how he uh, denied knowing Jesus and how uh, eventually Jesus gave him the opportunity to put things right after the resurrection when Jesus had risen and uh, at the lake shore as uh, they had a fire there and uh, Jesus came and uh, met with them and then met with G Peter on his own and uh, asked Peter, do you love me? And so anyway, he, he was given that opportunity. Then we know that Peter on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came and descended upon them that he was uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and stood in the middle of Jerusalem and explained what had taken place and uh, shared that it was part of God's plan that Jesus should die and be buried and rise again. And so now here we have Peter having experienced persecution along the way. Um, he writes to folks, I'm going to read from the beginning of the chapter and just uh, a few verses down. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to, to, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of troubles. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. As we look into this, we, we see that uh, Peter, again, is recognizing God's mercy. You know, he realized that Jesus forgave him, even though he had denied knowing him. And that is an important thing for us to remember, that God is a merciful God. And so here he says, praise to the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, the resurrection is such an important part of uh, the Christian message. It's that which gives us hope because Jesus died but conquered death and rose victorious and is now ascended and in the presence of the Father. And we receive new birth. We are born again by the Spirit of God. And as a result, we have a relationship with God and we can know his presence through whatever experience we have. We're going through this at the moment, but we can know God's presence with us. And so he reminds us that there is an inheritance. He looks beyond the circumstances of the present into the future. We have Jesus as an example for that. That we need to, sometimes we are, our thoughts are dominated by the present. But we need to lift our eyes beyond the present into the future. And recognize what there is for us. 
You know, it's said of Jesus that he who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame. What that says to us is that Jesus looked beyond the cross, beyond his sufferings, to the result. Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising its shame. The joy of our salvation. The joy of taking our place. The pain that he experienced, he looked beyond that because he knew, he knew that it would mean our salvation. And so we need to give thanks and praise to God and look into the future and know that we have an inheritance. An inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to re be revealed in the last time. We have an inheritance. The future beyond this life is much better. Something that we can look forward to. That God has in store for us. Remember the words of Jesus, I am going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. And so we have that hope. But we also know that at this moment in time, God protects us. He is the one who defends us. We need sometimes to put on the whole armor of God. Not sometimes, we always need to be equipped with the whole armor of God. That we might be able to withstand the, the devil's schemes. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In these days, <clears throat> don't despair. Instead, look beyond the circumstances and know that we as God's people can bring hope to a world in need. A world that is, is faltering. A world that doesn't know where to go. The song, where can we go but to the Lord, comes to mind. And then Peter says about the trials that come. In this you greatly rejoice, though for now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. You see, it's a test of faith. Do you believe that God is with you? Do you believe that God is in control? Of course he is. God is still on the throne. That was one of the songs that I played. And he will remember his own. God is still on the throne. Uh, people are saying that uh, the universe is speaking. No, it's the God of the universe who is speaking. Who is challenging us about our priorities. We need to put God first. We need to look beyond the circumstances that we have at this moment in time and rejoice that we can know his presence throughout. That yes, there are times when we face difficulties, but we're not alone. He is with us. If God be for us, who can it be against us, says the Apostle Paul. And then he reminds us that though we have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy for receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Are you thrilled? I get so thrilled with Jesus. He loves us. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to, to know that we can have that relationship with him that is close. That we don't feel alone. That we do feel his encouragement, his presence with us. God wants us to look beyond our circumstances. God loves us and has promised to meet every need. All that we have. Maybe we're struggling at this time. Maybe you're feeling a little bit depressed. But please, look to God. Know that we as the people of God 
care for each other, we share with each other. If one is in need, we need to find ways in which we can help. Simple things, sometimes just a, a simple phone call can make a difference in somebody's life. Somebody who feels lonely, somebody who feels that nobody cares. We are God's hands and feet and sometimes his voice in sharing with people and letting them know that they're not forgotten, that they are loved. And as the people of First Baptist, we need to support each other and look into the community and see what is God saying to us and what is he preparing us for? I think there are great things in the future, but we look beyond the present circumstances, look beyond the, the present situation and trust. God loves us. May you find that thrill, that thrill of experiencing his presence here and now. Read his word, find encouragement from his word. Find those things that he wants to share with you at this time. Don't despair. God loves you. Though you've not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. I think of Paul and Silas as they were uh, arrested for sharing the good news of Jesus and they are thrown into the innermost prison and their feet put in stocks. What did they do? They sang praises to God. They sang praises in the midst of the suffering. What happened? The doors sprang open. As a result of that experience, a church was born in Philippi. As the jailer and his family came to faith and they realized, as the jailer had asked, what must I do to be saved? Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You and your household. And they were welcomed into the family of God at that time born again of the Spirit. May we who love God recognize his love for us and realize that we can rejoice in suffering. We can be encouraged through the tough times. Yes, these are not easy times. These are tough times. We ourselves are, are struggling to get the house ready for photographs tomorrow. And uh, it's not easy. But we're trusting that God has a plan for us and that we, are, we should be living in Collingwood, not in Barry, so that we can serve the church better. Continue to pray for us and that we too, as, as with you, that together we will serve him and reach the community in a very special way. I'm going to play one more song on the piano and then I will close with a prayer.
thank you for your word and for your encouragement and pray your blessing. Pray that each one that uh, hears this message may be encouraged and may look beyond the circumstances and have a, a reminder that we have an inheritance. The inheritance is protected. Nothing can get at it. We are yours. We belong to you. No one can take us out of your hand. So help us to trust in you, not in our circumstances, but in all that you can provide for us, the way that you help us through. We give you thanks and pray that each of us might know your blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.